Good morning. Hi. Well, I think I just want to start the show off with a little prayer. First, that I wrote. Um, yeah, I would like to give this show over to Spirit for joy, healing, and for connection. Father, this is your show. May I remember who I truly am by experiencing you speaking and moving through me. May we all have the courage to speak what is true for us and on our hearts and the ears to hear what you would have us hear. Use my voice, my hands, my feet, and my heart. I am yours. So the first thing that I want to talk about is what being humble means to me. And yeah, for me, it wasn't um, natural <laughs> to be humble. I think it's been a, a discovery um, of putting God first in my life and um, just saying yes. And that, that has always felt really, really humbling to me because I say yes to God out of just pure inspiration and excitement and then I don't know what's going to be asked of me and at times it can feel very, very scary and yet my prayer is that I'll be shown that there's no sacrifice and no loss and, and I have been shown time after time that, that there is no loss. and. Um, so for me, also being humble means to, to judge not, which pretty much sums up the Bible in my mind. And that is a practice, because if I think I know anything, then I can't be shown. I can't um, hear the voice for spirit, the guidance that's going to come through. So it's just a constant emptying out of, of my mind, of what I think I know what I think I want, and um, so yeah, we ha we we had a lot of ideas for the show, the the title, but um, I feel like you know I'm already a very um, yeah boisterous personality, and I don't have a filter. So <clears throat> to name the show based on that wasn't really what I needed to work on. I feel like what I need to work on is being humble. So that's why um, it's called Humbled, and also because um, I heard to do this show about three months ago, um, right when I got back, right when I left the monastery, and a week before I came to Mexico, I heard, you're going to do a show next week. And um, yeah, I, I didn't, I wasn't ready, and I felt like I had a lot of healing that I wanted to go through before I put myself out there again. And yeah, all things work together for good, but um, here it is, almost three months later. And um, so I feel like on, I've, I never make notes for gatherings, and yet I put together <laughs> some notes because I really wanted to feel like I was um, extending something that, that I've learned. And yet I find today that I, I know nothing once again, I'm at this point in my life where I don't know who I am or what I want. And I heard from spirit that this show was going to be the answer. So I've delayed and delayed, and here I am. And I feel like it's all perfect, but um, I just made some notes because looking back, there's been three pivotal points in my life, and this is one of them, I feel. So I've, I have some parables to tell you and I've titled them. Um, the first one is Never Bring Home a Black Man, and I'll explain that. The second one is The Glimpse, and the third is A Holy Relationship Will Be Given You. So, well, um, I was raised by a Catholic family, and um, I did everything 
they told me to. I was a very good girl. I made good grades. I followed in my sister's footsteps, and I was on the homecoming court cheerleader. Um, I watched my little brother, and when my first year into college, I joined a sorority like my sister had done, and and then I realized that I was living someone else's life, and I, it was no longer tolerable. So um, I moved to away to college, not very far, but to New Orleans, and and it, I remember my dad saying. Um, yeah, I was home for something, and he said, you know, here's the rules to be in this family now that you're on your own. You know, never get pregnant before you're married. Never bring home a black man. And I, at the time, I was in the musical hair, and I was dating a black woman. So I had a lot of feelings of hiding and restriction, and my father even hired a private investigator to follow me in college to find out if I was gay. So it was like, you know, a whole hidden life that I lived and so that was one of the points where I broke out of the concept of um, doing what the world wanted me to do and I found out who I I was and at the time that's who I was so um, the next pivotal point in my life was 25 years ago and um, it's when I had a glimpse and so I was about 25 so that tells you my age and I was in love for the first time and very, very happy. And I was in college doing my music. And so I started to talk about marriage and children. And my girlfriend said, um, if you keep talking like this, you're going to have to leave. And yeah, I was devastated. I, it was like, it didn't make sense to me why I was doing all this. And I guess I thought love would be different. So I was learning how to meditate at the time. And I moved to the back of the house. And I was just, I was, I, my heart was, I was like in shock. So for two weeks, I prayed. And the little bit that I had learned how to meditate, I was just, yeah, I was doing that to the best of my ability for two weeks. And I I reached a point where the pain was intolerable in my mind. It felt like the thoughts were going to kill me. And so there was one moment that I just, I set my, my eyes on God and, and I just stayed with it so diligently and peace came over me. And I thought, whoa, there is something else in this pain. and. I didn't look back at the pain. I, I was so familiar with it. Like I thought, I'm never going back there. It was a decision point. I made a decision in my mind to never go back to my thoughts because they were going to literally kill me. And when I got up from the bed, I was never going to think again. I didn't know the Course in Miracles at the time. And I got up and I had been asking Spirit to take this love from my heart, and He did, or my decision did. I don't know what happened, but a stream of light came through my mind, and I was, I had the, I was experiencing an awakening mind for like a week, and yeah, it was just this presence, and everything and everyone was drawn to me. I, I can't even explain the experience, but it wasn't, it was a miracle. It wasn't of me, and so. I can remember the point when I made the decision to go back to sleep. It was about a week later, and a beautiful girl took my hand, and I went, ah, oh, here we go again. I didn't know the course back then, but I, yeah, I just, I've never been able to get it back, and um, so I feel like that's, it's, that's what a glimpse is by definition. It's just a looking, a seeing, a just, like, here you go, this is what's possible. So there's that. And then I, this would be my third pivotal point 25 years later, I think. Um, a holy relationship will be given you. And so I've just let go of a five year relationship, and it was given for the healing of my mind and no other reason. So it was a teacher student relationship, me being the student. And, um, yeah, it's just been profound, um, the healing, the 
seeing the um, facing abandonment, rejection, deferral, codependency, fear, whatever. It all came up in this healing relationship as well as rest and love and gentleness. And because we, we need those times or we wouldn't continue on this, this journey. Um, so I, as I did in my house when I was growing up, when I joined this community seven years ago, I've been just practicing really um, those who have, you know, following, really following and watching those who have gone before me on this journey because they have something that I want and it is peace and joy and happiness. So I've just been learning the way to do that. And now um, it seems like my assignment is to find out yet again who I am, what I want, and I don't know because I've let it all go. Um, and I've asked Spirit to give to me what He would have me have um, because I, I gave up relationships when I first came here, my music, I let it all be given back by spirit without making another life for myself, which I was really, really good at doing. Um, I created several different lives in this one lifetime. And um, so now I, I knew that the first step was this show for some reason. I thought, why would I do a show? I've lived a life of theater, acting, rock star, music like this. This is for everyone else. Let them have their show, you know, but and I heard it was for me, and so, so I'm doing it. And, and I feel it. I feel a spark. I, I don't know what the future will look like, and I don't need to know. But right now I'm um, in Mexico with, with a school, a mind training school, so that I can pass on what I've learned, so that I can teach what I would learn, so that I can more um, be used by spirit in every, every single moment. And I have been given a new um, assignment. It's my primary relationship is sitting next to me right, right now. Um, Emily and I are in pretty much the same boat in our lives. I think, may I say that your divorce is finalized today? Mm -hmm. So I'm a few months ahead of you on this um, kind of just letting go of our old lives. And, and we were put together for the healing of that. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's actually felt really deep, my relationship with Ricky, because I just landed here in Mexico um, about a month ago. And I was actually going to be going to a different house. We have a few community houses here in Mexico. And Jesus seemed to reorchestrate everything just a few days before I flew from the States. And I was going to be at La Casa with Ricky. And yeah, it just, it just felt from when I landed that it was very obvious that this was a given relationship. Because we started to see very quickly that we weren't really able to do anything on our own. Like things that even a week before or whatever would have flowed very effortlessly when we would try and do them in this new configuration. It was like it was dysfunctional. Something didn't flow. And yet when we came together, this clarity of mind came in, mm. like not because of anything we were personally doing or anything that one of us on our own was bringing, but just the fact that it was a given assignment and we were supposed to be together. And in that, that's the guidance. When we follow that, the spirit is present and we feel that presence and we feel that clarity and we can move forward with it. And literally, you know, our connection, because this is a primary relationship that's been given and we use that term to, um, to describe a relationship that's given by the spirit that is uh, a priority, like it is, the most important thing, like A Course in Miracles is a path in relationships. So when you have a primary relationship, that is a priority and it really needs to be, to be honored because in that you are given the most opportunities for healing, like just coming together in that. It's like whatever you need to see at that time will be shown to you in the other and together 
by having this shared purpose together, mm. you will you will heal it. So, because this is a primary relationship, the importance of it, because as Ricky said, she's uh, overseeing a mind training school at La Casa de Milagros, which is one of our community properties mm. here. And um, if we weren't connected in mind, everything would seemingly fall apart. It's like the world would fall apart if we weren't connected because it's all perception. Well, it's really bizarre, but it does when we get in, like we have completely opposite dynamics. <laughs> like we're opposite completely and we fight like sisters loud. And um, we, the other night we, we got in a fight and we we're just like, this is just not working. And so we just said bye. And then the next morning I said, you know, that really, it hurt like like it was like a love relationship. Why I said it hurt like that, like like it was in a romantic relationship or something. She goes, "Me too." I was like, "What the hell? How can it feel the same?" So we're just finding that we can heal all those dynamics that weren't healed in the past, like with each other. It feels pretty deep and weird at the same time. Yeah, because like we're never really healing anything um, with each other. It's like the Spirit will put together people with um, Jesus calls complementary ego dynamics. Mm -hmm. And all that means is that we will bring out unconscious patterns in each other purely for the, for the purpose of them being raised to awareness so we can let them go. And in that we're joined. So yeah, it's like there's this uh, stability of knowing the relationship is given and this deep connection and deep love that's underneath it and then within that there's a safety that the darkness can can rise up and yeah like I was saying if we're not connected it feels like even at La Casa things don't flow everything just feels very like yeah nothing's making sense it's disjunctive and it means we need to come together like when there's any kind of discord we need to come together and it's the fast track because whatever the block is, we're facing it, we're, we're joining, we're in prayer together. It's like spirit, whatever this is, lift it from our minds and we're in it together. And then the connection comes back and everything flows and there's that clarity and it's beautiful. And then we hit another hurdle and it's like, and it's really, yeah, it just feels really deep because I'm seeing patterns, I think we both are, mm. patterns in our mind that have been there for a long time that didn't even, weren't even conscious and they're starting to become more clear. And we're given to each other to heal that. So even whatever patterns we had in our past relationships, that in that dynamic, it wasn't able to really be released. Mm. This is like something's fresh in this. And because we don't have the, what would you say, the messiness of a, the like a romantic of a, relationship. Yeah, yeah, we don't really want anything from yeah. each other. It means that um, there isn't that same fear of loss that can come up in a, in a seemingly romantic relationship. Well, so. Spirit tried to get us, give us this assignment probably three years back, and we, we just couldn't do it. We, we said no, and like people had to split us up, actually. Yeah. Like to, yeah. <laughs> so we're shocked that, it's, that, it, that we're taking it. Yeah. We, we're grateful for yeah. it, and it feels... It feels really deep, actually. Because even when like, the blocks or the darkness or the discomfort comes up, because the purpose of the relationship is healing, it's, like, it's not really about us fixing it interpersonally or even mm. it being comfortable. It's like what's inspiring for both of us is that we're healing lifetimes. Every day we're healing lifetimes in this relationship mm. because these core beliefs and dynamics are coming up and in that we want to keep going towards each other because our whole purpose in this lifetime like we've said yes to our purpose being healing of the mind nothing else and then everything else comes in up in that to be seen but it's it kind of doesn't matter how I don't want to say bad it gets because it makes it sound like it's really bad which it's not but it doesn't matter what comes up because it's inspiring to see it and to have it released and have it healed. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. We had a moment yesterday where oh, I didn't, I didn't think it was going to be solved, and we were just not able to feel anything for a while. And finally, we just started to give up. Like, okay, maybe we're not going to work this out. Maybe you should just go to the other house and 
you know, and then like you could feel us both just go, yeah, maybe it's not going to work out. And I was like, yeah, I don't actually like the energy I'm in. You're right. Maybe I'm wrong. And then she goes, maybe I'm wrong. I think you're right. And I was like, what's happening? Like, we just stopped caring. Like, and that, it's, this whole journey, I find, is just a surrender. A surrender to whoever is in front of me upsetting me. It's, it's a constant practice of forgiveness and, and coming back to I, I do not know. And if I let that come in my mind, then I can be shown. And usually it just, yeah, if it's given over to spirit. So as you just heard, we just relaxed. And, and I said, yeah, don't go tonight. I, I want you to go with me tomorrow to the show. Because at that point I was like, well, I guess I'm doing the show by myself. And I was okay with it. Oh, wow, we're early. I thought <laughs> It was a total miracle, though, because like what Ricky was describing there, it seemed like we were at a wall and we of ourselves could not figure it out. It was like, how do we move forward? But it was that moment where we both at the same moment said, maybe I'm wrong, like both of us, like whatever we felt like, oh, you know, you're doing something or it was like letting go of even knowing what the situation was or thinking that we were right in it. And in that instant, something popped. I don't actually know what happened, I don't either. but we were back in love again. And it was, yeah, getting to that state of like letting go of the defense, letting the go, letting go of the, I know I'm right, you're wrong. Cause there's, there's no movement in that. You're locked in that space. But when I come into humbleness, the name of your show, it's like then the spirit rushes in and does everything. We're not actually doing the healing, but we're stepping back and saying, okay, I don't know what I'm doing here. And that's an invitation, so. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I did want to read something from the Course that I just, you know, was in prayer this morning and just said, what would you have me share from the Course? And this is what I opened up to and I, <clears throat> it just really resonated with me. So I just wanted to share it with you guys. And it's just one paragraph from The Circle of Atonement. And it says, The only part of your mind that has reality is the part that links you still with God. Would you have all of it transformed into a radiant message of God's love to share with all the lonely ones who have denied Him? God makes this possible. Would you deny his yearning to be known? You yearn for him, as he for you. This is forever changeless. Accept then the immutable. Leave the world of death behind and return quietly to heaven. There is nothing of value here and everything of value there. Listen to the Holy Spirit and to God through him. He speaks of you to you. There is no guilt in you, for God is blessed in his Son as the Son is blessed in him. Yeah, and this is, this, what I just read, it's more like a, it's not a form lesson, it's a state of mind lesson, it's a vibrational lesson, it's an energy, it's, it's coming into that state of mind where I trust that that I'm with God, all I have to do is call upon His name and just say, I want, I want to feel you in my life, in every moment, and I want to be moved by you, and that's, that's my prayer, and it's just, you know, what helps me is just a constant, okay, I don't know what that means, but it's a constant um, identifying with the Spirit instead of a person. So we have five minutes? Okay, great. That's what I needed to know. So I just want to say that it's really helpful for me when I identify with spirit and the unknown instead of a girl in the world trying to work things out and feel safe and protected. And I wanted to share this song, and Emily is going to sing it with me. I wrote called Ruins, um, and that is just about, um, I think Pete said you could hear, hear the words really well, but it's about letting go of the old thought system and allowing the thought system of God to take over. Okay. And now we'll go to Jeff. <laughs> Try and 
true No longer required That every word Once spoken fade With every thought And dust be laid Father, I kneel at your feet from my heart I seek you just wanna be with you just wanna be with you everything in me is quiet and your voice is heard in the silence Everything in me whispers freedom Every voice that screams is forgiven Father, I kneel at your feet Jesus, from my heart I seek you Just want to It's where you enter In the center of our wounds In the broken down ruins Of surrender It's where you enter Overboard by love's invitation I give the hurt in my heart full permission To come out the dark and into forgiveness Father, I kneel at your feet Jesus, from my heart I seek you I just want to Of the pretender, that's where you enter. In the center of our wounds, in the broken down ruins of surrender, it's where you enter. Thank 
Dziękuję.